I'm Adjua Boa, a model, founder of Girls Talk, and an advocate for female empowerment. Oh, she feels really like amazing and empowering. I do it for myself, and people respect that. You know, they admire that. Riding motorcycles is basically a symbol that we're not going to be told what to do anymore, and we're going to just do whatever we want. I want to use my personal experience of depression and addiction to get girls around the world talking about mental health, body image, and sexuality. We are here, and we are black, and we are woman, and godly, and ain't fucking sorry for we have always been slaying, and slaying, and slaying, and did I mention slaying? Two years ago, I was struggling with depression and addiction. Following three months in rehab, I made a suicide attempt. After sadly being sectioned at a psychiatric hospital, I soon recovered with the help of several strong women in my life. I realized I was glad to still be here, and Girls Talk was born. I headed downtown to speak to Kieran Gandhi, an outspoken activist, MIA's drummer, MBA grad, and musician in her own right about running the London Marathon while menstruating. Hiya! What did it symbolise for you, like, running the marathon on well, the first day of your period? I had gotten to the marathon start line, and like any of us who have been caught unprepared on our cycle, I just started going through my options, okay? So I'm like, okay, what if I use a pad? Oh, hell no, I'm gonna chafe at 26 miles, no chance. Then... Um, really uncomfortable. Really well. uncomfortable, yeah. right. Um, no man I know would take a bunch of cotton, stick it between his balls and run 26 miles. No, Please, no, no man I know would. Yeah. And then I thought, uh, what about if I use a tampon? No, well, am I going to hold one extra tampon to run the whole thing? And, what, and then stop. And then stop and change it. There's no privacy on a marathon course either. I actually think it'd be more scarring to like squat in the middle of the side and start changing out my, my tampon. No way. Yeah. Uh, but the more I ran, the more I thought, you know, while I had the choice, that day to reject my own stigma, mm -hmm. to reject my own oppression. Millions of women and girls around the world do not. And that's when I realized how profound it is that we can't talk about our own bodies and our own menstruation and our own um, sexuality and our own masturbation or any of these things. It's mm -hmm. awful. It's easier for me to lie in bed and fear that I've like bled on someone's bed yeah. or that and I'm walking through the airport and I've like you know, accidentally bled through my trousers. Right. I think that we teach young women to internalize that shame and hold on to it. Women are taught from a young age that their main value is derived from their looks. Pretty mm -hmm. much their only value is derived from their looks. And yes, you can go to college or whatever, but all the subliminal messaging, unfortunately, is still you better look good. So we say breasts, yes, we love. Uh, makeup on the face, yes, we love that. Hair styled and done beautifully, we love that. Big booty, we love that. Beautiful clothes, heels, yes, we want all that. But menstruation, no, please, don't ever tell us that that's happening mm -hmm. because that's not for the sexual consumption of men. It's not yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. It's not a turn on. It's not biologically made to turn men on, right? You know, in the, in the global conversation about women's issues, menstrual stigma ends up being low on the priority list because it's not life or death. But the interesting thing is that it's actually one of the things that we can solve, you and me and anybody really in our circles, we can solve this within our lifetime. Kieran was so relatable because she didn't take the high ground. She was positive about what we can do together as men and women. I felt so inspired, I wanted to mark my girls' talk journey. My friend and musician Brooke Candy took me to Sean from Texas to get another tattoo. Do you get a lot of women coming in for tattoos? Absolutely. I think just more women get tattoos. Oh, really? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I always say that guys have women. They have a hard time deciding what they want. You know, women know, so they get tattooed more. Now. That's so true. <laughs> it just seemed right to have you here, seeing as your tattoos on your body is like such a work of art. Thank you. So, makes sense. We obviously, we made friends when I moved to LA. It's been so nice to get to know you. What message do you think you're trying to put out through your music and your words? 
I am all about female empowerment. I'm all about sexual freedom. I don't want to feel ashamed for wanting to to be sexual. It's just that's what we're on the planet to do. You know, we're on the planet to feel. We're on the planet to share love. Yeah, that body confidence that you have is continuous throughout every single image you put out there. My you know, body confidence or what I choose to show how intense and in your face I am with, you know, my sexuality and my body. It's because I've struggled with it, so I felt like I had to face it. That's how I live my life. Really. I feel like the music is just a vehicle to promote the message, really. What does the word woman mean to you? The word woman can mean such a wide variety of things these days. A lot of men I know are very womanly, a lot of women I know are very manly. I think it's, yeah, I think it's just this uh, fluid experience of, um, I don't know, life, I guess. Across town in Silver Lake, I met up with Jesse from The Velvets, an all-female motorcycle club. Hey! <laughs> I'm not good. lovely to meet you. So I just wanted to know a little bit more about how you got into bikes. I started out working on cars with my dad when I was young, like very young, like probably from the age of like four or five. And then later in life, like I would meet people and try to be nerding out about stuff and they would kind of like, you know, like either be like, you don't know what you're talking about or they yeah. would like try to like mansplain to me that something That's I said how, was yeah, wrong yeah. or something and I'd be like, no, I know what I'm talking about, yeah, exactly. shut up. It's very interesting how women with no, like, clothes on advertise, like, whether it's cars or motorcycles, what isn't theirs, but is the males. Exactly. And it's so lovely that you're taking that, that back. And what do you guys wear? Most women's gear traditionally always came in with pink. A lot of the women's stuff has, like, pink tribal, or, oh, like, no. butterflies, no, or, like, shit like that. It's not butch, it's not manly, that's not what it's about. It shouldn't, that shouldn't be, you know, what you immediately think when you think of a woman doing those kind of things. Exactly. Well, I think it's also like, you know, all part of like finding a new space for femininity and yeah. like, fi like being like, yeah, I'm feminine. And I yeah. also love to get on a motorcycle and ride super fast. So I wanted to invite you to ride out with us. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, I think it would be fun. You can be my passenger and yeah. you can take all the girls and oh we can God, go on a little ride. Oh my God, that would be so cool. <laughs> We're rad. Love is basically about respect, about affection, about being caring. I feel like the world is evolving and uh, one of the things about like the evolution with gender is that it like there's, it doesn't matter. Gender isn't the reason I'm gonna be in love with someone, you know, it's like who their spirit is. Jesse and the Velvets are a testament to the fact that too many spaces have been claimed by men. They are an all-female bike gang, creating a space for themselves in the typical male world of motorcycling, and proving girls can be or do whatever they want. Just stay as upright as you can. Yeah. Stay as behind me as you can. I know you're gonna wanna like watch the road and stuff, but try to not Go like that. To the side too much? Yeah. I feel like when we ride together, it's there's like, we all kind of know like that we're safe and that we're kind of protected. As an adult now riding, uh, I feel like I've finally found a part of myself that was missing. So every time I get to sit on a motorcycle and ride, it's like reconnecting with myself each time. I think that it just became really male dominated because women have sort of always been repressed and for the longest time, women have been told what to do, and now we're not going to really stand for it anymore. So, riding motorcycles now 
for a lot of women is basically a symbol that we're not going to be told what to do anymore and we're going to just do whatever we want. I just feel like a huge amount of responsibility to make sure that these younger girls have, you know, feel the same way about being able to do whatever they want to do, whether that's riding a motorcycle or, you know, walking down Venice Beach with no top on or just do whatever they want to do. Girl Power stands for us all coming together to challenge the norms and talk about our shared problems. Girls Talk is for every girl who's growing up, who needs someone to talk to. A space where they can share their worries and use female creativity as a tool for change. I'm positive, together we can make that difference. I'm Adjua Boa, a model, founder of Girls Talk, and an advocate for female empowerment. Oh, she feels really like amazing and empowering. I do it for myself, and people respect that. You know, they admire that. Riding motorcycles is basically a symbol that we're not going to be told what to do anymore, and we're going to just do whatever we want. I want to use my personal experience of depression and addiction to get girls around the world talking about mental health, body image and sexuality.